Yep, we're foliar feeding. And uh, here, let me get to the end of the row and then we'll get out and talk about what on earth am I planning to do. Um, but these beans are looking good down here and uh, kind of excited. There's a couple little tough spots. Let's let's be honest, there's some weeds and uh, there, there's some spots in the field that just aren't going to make a comeback from the drought damage. But 95% of the field uh, is looking fairly remarkable. And uh, my rate is falling because this molasses is an absolute pain. Um, if I ever do molasses again, I'll have to pre-filter it somehow, pre-strain it. it. It's building up on the screens. I don't know what, if it just needs more water, but let's get out. All right, well, good morning officially. Thank you for joining me today. Doing a foliar feed today. And uh, so we sap tested this and the sap test came back that we're on our typical stuff where our, our molybdenum, our magnesium, our boron, irons and calcium. So I put all that stuff in the tank. In a normal foliar program, what I'm trying to develop with the foliar program is can I uh, do better with my nutrient management dollars and maybe not save money, but can I reallocate the money and do a better job? Uh, is it possible I could actually get better yields with the same nutrient dollars or could I get the same yield maybe put less products on the field and be more environmentally friendly be a good steward of the land um, I, I I care about my money I don't care about the river let's be honest the water's clean by my place who cares about the metro um, and so I think I'm here at the best time possible so with a foliar program, we want to be out here. The dew is just coming off, so the plants are cool, they're receptive, they're hungry, and uh, any vapor that we create, should that plant should be able to breathe in. Anything that lands on the plant, that should be able to suck in. Uh, Age-wise, I believe I'm to the closest of R3 that I can be. I can't rewind time and make products get here sooner but i think i'm right there where all our pods are just these little tiny nubbins uh down in the plant there's some pea pods down in the plant starting but i i think i'm as close to perfect timing as i can get um and and timing of the day weather conditions and stuff like that so i i i i, I i'm doing the best that i can fall for your retailer and uh, if you got any retailer that says, hey, while you're going to the field with that herbicide, throw this product in, uh, your response should be to them is what growth stage are my plants and how do you know what products I need? Because the problem with that retail approach of just throw it in since you're heading out there is one, we're trying to create a vapor and very fine droplets that are absorbed easily. But maybe your herbicide program, maybe you're going out with an air induction nozzle and how good is that going to work? These big, large droplets that have the potential to run off the plant, harder for it to absorb. Um, and, and then the, the grow stage, the timing of the day, things like that. If it's 85, 90 degrees, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that plant is not taking that foliar feed up. And then you're going to say, well, I got zero response from where I threw that product in. That proves that foliar feed don't work here. Believe it or not. Believe it or not, I actually seen a farmer on the Ag Talk forum. Now, the brain trust of Ag Talk, there's some people there that I enjoy reading. I, I respect their opinion. Um, but when a guy on there says, I tried biological products, so that's proof that biological biology does not work on my farm. Like, I, I, he didn't have asterisks. There was no indication that he was joking. He, it looked like a serious statement. And you're thinking, God help us that the American farmer doesn't believe that biologicals work on their farm. That's how far removed we are as corn and soybean growers. That's how far removed we are from our soil. And, uh, oh, you're going to get me on a whole nother tent of feeding the world. Got to produce cheap food. Oh, don't even get me started. Um, 
But now this field, normally I, I would do this foliar program to do better with my nutrient management. This field, I added a whole okay product from AEA. Uh, it's a potash, potassium product that is supposed to help with pod setting and pod fill. Uh, I also added a fulvic acid and sugar product called Sintos from Conklin. And then we also added just some good old fashioned feed grade molasses. And I think that's what's giving me my problem. If I was to do this over again, I would, uh, I would absolutely um, just, I, I would buy uh, liquid fertilizer ready grade products. Um, or somehow purify the feed grade molasses a little bit because it's really having problems with my filters and screens. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna spray this on. I'm probably gonna cultivate this field one more time because I cultivate it with my old crappy John Deere. And so I'll hit it with the buffalo to, to clean it up one more time. And then we're gonna sit back. We are gonna yield check it. I'm gonna not be, I won't have enough to cover the whole field but uh, um, I'll leave some check strips so we can actually do a yield comparison so we can do a visual comparison and uh, go from there and so I'm gonna leave it right there on that note guys unless something drastically changes or whatever I hit a tree uh, thanks for watching me today and uh, yeah, leave a comment about your experience with the foliar because I'm trying to learn.